operate that way. It gets brain input from brain and spinal cord. Uh, and so what kind of input is that? Well, it superimposes commands on what the gut might otherwise do. So the brain can get it to do more or less and make it behave or misbehave. Um, secondly, it turns out that the two brains talk to each other. If you look at the vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S, which is the major nerve, the conduit that conducts information to and from the gut, you find that there's far more fibers carrying information from the gut to the brain than from the brain to the gut. Oh, interesting. So that leads us to think that the gut has a lot of that the brain is interested in learning about and the gut sends information up there. And now, in particularly UCLA, but other places as well, uh, stimulation of the vagus nerve, which can be done through the skin electrically to mimic the kinds of signals the gut would send to the brain, has been shown actually uh, to improve mood and is used to treat depression. Uh, and that kind of vagus nerve stimulation improves learning and memory in both humans and animals. So some of the signals which the gut sends to the brain that do not come to consciousness can help the brain's well-being. You had mentioned this discovery related to serotonin. And I want you to talk about the role of serotonin in the gut and also with SSRIs and what you discovered back then. Okay, so serotonin is a very well-known neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitters can be thought of as the chemical language that nerve cells use to talk to each other. And I will use the word receptor, and the receptors are the ears that detect the words. So if one nerve cell has got a message for another, it puts out a chemical. The chemical goes to the other one and acts on a receptor, which means that the other, the, the following nerve cell, the follower, can understand what's been said and detects what the message, the message being contained in the chemical. So it's a chemical message. Uh, serotonin is one of the more famous of these. It's a small molecule, and it's well known for its effect in the brain. So you know that uh, mood... It's very much determined by serotonin. It contributes to sex. It contributes to eating and drinking. It contributes to temperature regulation, sleeping and dreaming. It seems, I mean, happiness itself needs a serotonin contribution. If it's not functioning, people may commit suicide. So it seems that everything that makes life worthwhile involves serotonin in one way or another. Nevertheless... Perhaps 95% of the serotonin in the body is in the gut. So the gut is where the action is. And you can think of the brain for all the power that serotonin has there as an evolutionary afterthought in terms of uh, amount of serotonin. So what's it all doing in the gut, all the serotonin? For one thing, it it was discovered years ago, it can trigger those reflexes that I told you about. So it can make the gut secrete. It can make the gut move. Um, If it's turned on, it can make you nauseated. So it does lots of different things, and it does it because although there's just one little molecule, serotonin, there are almost 20 different receptors that it talks to. And so depending on which of these receptors it activates, it has many different functions. So it can do lots of things. So it's a critical function, critical hormone for making the gut work. So some of the serotonin, the largest amount, is in the lining of the gut. And that not only triggers reflexes like the peristaltic reflex, which gets the gut to move, and secretion, which gets slime and fluid to go into the lumen of the gut, 
But in addition, it can trigger nausea, terrible nausea. Uh, so it can send very nasty messages back to the brain that the brain hates to hear about, uh, which can train an animal very nicely, by the way, of what not to eat. Um, the gut, can, unfortunately, is a very powerful teacher in that respect, and it uses mostly negative reinforcement. Um, but serotonin also talks to distant organs coming from the gut, so it leaves the gut, secreted into the blood, and influences bone. And so we now think that it may be very important in osteoporosis, maintenance of bone density. That's a profound connecting the dots. Yeah, it is really a very important substance. And most recently, uh, and it's the uh, theme of the latest application that I have pending at the National Institutes of Health, is it's very, very important in even sculpting the formation of the gut um, during uh, fetal life. So it's developmentally a growth factor. So it's a hormone, it's a neurotransmitter, it's a messenger. It does all many, many things. And knowing that it's in the gut turns out to be a very important piece of information. And you might think, and if you did, you'd be right, that if it doesn't work well, there's going to be some kind of disease that comes from it. And so there's evidence that uh, the misfunction or malfunction of serotonin may be important in uh, the irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease. What do you think about the SSRIs? And say what they are, too, if you would, please. Sure. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. That's a long word. SSRI is easier, which is why people use it. Um, and what they do is they turn off a molecule called, which is a pump. And it's a pump called the serotonin reuptake transporter, or the serotonin transporter, that pumps serotonin from the extracellular space into cells. So when serotonin is secreted, it goes across to a receptor, it has an action. But you can't let it just sit there. You've got to remove it and to turn off the action, because otherwise if you just left it on the receptor, the action would go on forever. So to turn it off, you take the serotonin back, and that involves this pump. So the SSRIs inhibit the pump. Well, what you can think of is if serotonin is turning a switch on, then the serotonin pump or the transporter turns the switch off. And if you inhibit the pump, then you favor on. So the reason you give an SSRI is to make the effect of serotonin longer and stronger. And ultimately, not immediately, but after two to three weeks in the brain, that makes you feel better if you start from a point of view of depression. And it has effects elsewhere. And the effects elsewhere have to do with making serotonin too strong. So in the gut, the SSRIs can make you feel nauseated, which is the first thing they do, which is called a side effect, but it's not a side effect. It's a direct effect and an unpleasant one. And then they can cause diarrhea, and they can just stop the gut if they just so overly stimulate the serotonin effect that nothing moves anymore. Then you just have to stop them. So that's why it's also important, this discovery about the gut brain and the fact that serotonin is made there, right. is that it's and not it's just made in the brain. That's correct. And it's also very important to know that there are other places because it tells you the SSRIs have other effects. And knowing that serotonin has an effect in development makes one wonder a second and third time about how wise it is to give this during pregnancy. And people are beginning to question that. What do you think of tryptophan? Well, that's where serotonin comes from. Tryptophan is an amino acid. One way to get 